Matthias, welcome to the show. Yeah, nice to be here. Thank you very much. Yes, I've been um, several facilitators in my network reached out to me and said, Miriam, have you seen Matthias work? Has he Do you have him scheduled for the podcast already? So I think you're overdue <laughs> with yeah, the concept uh, of facilitate. Yes, um, it's quite a uh, yeah um, interesting year for me because um, I'm doing that kind of facilitating uh, for over 10 years. And uh, this year I started to reach out for other facilitators Uh, to do it and yeah it's quite a, a, a buzz um, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of pictures on LinkedIn and that's also yeah a reason why it works that good because people like to share their uh, pictures about it yeah the facilitating and we'll get into the details of what that actually is in a minute um, because I always start with the same question it's kind of a ritual When did you start calling yourself a facilitator? And do you? Um, yes, now I do. Um, and I guess I learned about the, the phrase facilitator um, when I met Johanna, one of my former co-founders of an innovation agency, because she's a very professional facilitator. And uh, we also had a coach who is... A facilitator and that's when i learned about yeah what is facility what is a facilitator um, but I, i'm doing it for for longer so i started to to moderate workshops uh, i guess in 2009 mm. and you just said that johanna is a very professional facilitator Mm -hmm. So what makes a facilitator professional or very professional? Um, she knows how to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to guide people through their topic mm. um, in a way that, that has got good results and that makes the workshop uh, yeah, very uh, in, in a good flow. Yes. She's um, a very um, um when I met her she's a she's very um logic and systematically thinking <laughs> and um uh, and when that when that met my creativity uh, we were a very good team to prepare and run workshops. Mm, yeah. The I hope she she hears the podcast practice. someday. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks Johanna uh, was a very good time. <laughs> beautiful and somehow the tape came into your life so you did innovation work innovation agency you mentioned mm -hmm. and um, maybe you can explain the to the audience what facilitating is what is the role of tape in your work and how did you get to that mm -hmm. yeah um, the whole story started when we were doing a world cafe A format, um, I guess it was 2014, about 15 maybe. And uh, we had uh, cardboards as, uh, yeah, as boards with, which we could move around, but they looked quite boring. Brown cardboard and they were pretty thick. So we had, uh, and, and we came up with the idea, okay, let's just put around some colorful tape to make them look nicer and that's when uh yeah a big love story started <laughs> and uh, i began to use tape in in workshops and very shy at the beginning but more and more and one day we had a lot of time in the preparation and we had uh, a lot of tape left um and then we started to decorate the room we started to decorate um how do you call a, a fire löscher a fire fire extinguisher fire extinguisher yes with flames 
uh, for example. And yeah, since then, um, I use tape as a very crucial uh, yeah, tool in, in every workshop. Interesting. Um, so it... And mm -hmm. I, I do it in a very intuitive way, or I did it. And now this year, when I started to, uh, yeah, to show people what it, what I do and to train people how they can do it in their formats, uh, I, I began to realize, okay, what's, what's in there. So mm. there's a, a lot of things I did very natural, um, naturally, um, And now, yeah, they I, I become aware of what what it's all about. And I love that, and I can only imagine that inviting new people into the craft or the art then also brings their own creativity in, and then expands even your toolbox or your perspective on yeah. it. Sure, every wor workshop um, I did this year um, uh, extended our our toolbox. Our, mm. Uh, yeah, co uh, facilitate community toolbox. Oh, beautiful, very, very nice, and and I love the workshops because, um, in the past I uh, did a lot of workshops with corporate teams, and um, every facilitator knows it. There are always some people who don't have the time or don't have the energy to run a workshop that that day. Um, and uh, yeah, the facility facilitators in, in the facilitate workshops they are also always uh, in, a, in a very good energy and they want to learn it and they are there for their own skills and um, so it's always a very nice atmosphere and um, mm. yeah, it's, it's it's a very cool network i can imagine because the moment you bring something tangible tactile into the space that you can touch and that has color yeah. it brings another dynamic Yeah, and they all have experience in workshops, so um, yeah, you don't have to um, to uh, explain what is a check in or something. Mm. They 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 it, it's very smooth. So, yeah. um, and I I would be curious about the development. So when I understand you correctly, in the beginning, the tape was a means to decorate the cardboard and a means to decorate the workshop space is it still decoration or does it also serve a function or even does the tape facilitate maybe mm -hmm. part of the flow the process the group of course it's so much more than just decora decoration <laughs> decoration is a, ni it's, 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 a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a nice part of it um but What I learned uh, this year is that tape um, makes the room the third facilitator. Mm. So um, you can uh, you can structure rooms. You can even let the room speak. The room can um, yeah welcome the people uh, who come to the workshop. Um, you can use it in workshops as um, yeah methodology. Um, as team building, um, to create an atmosphere, to to prototype, to to use storytelling, um, so it's it's really multifunctional. And now I'm curious, <laughs> so, and maybe we don't have to go deeper into all of those, but um, I would be curious to hear what do you mean when it becomes another facilitator and then so how do you yeah. use it in these or um, to well, welcome for example to welcome um, the participants yeah i i also learned that this year um in one of the last workshops um you you can use tape to to be uh, to make the room your co-facilitator uh for example i'm a very I would say I'm a very chaotic and creative person, so I can use tape to give the room more structure or to remind me of uh, important parts of the workshop or, or to give uh, the uh, yeah the participants more guidance, more orientation um, about the workshop. So the way how I um, imagine it is that you would base maybe have a line on the floor that separates it into part one and part two. 
or into yeah, the blue part and the red part. Yeah, there are a lot of examples um, also on my website. Um, and if, to begin, um, what I like the most is to yeah to welcome people to to do a little welcome, just welcome tape welcome on the floor and even a guide into the room from the floor. Um, and then if I have one team um, in a workshop, uh, then I like to to tape the whole agenda on the wall and even work in, into the agenda. So the uh, from the welcome that you have a um, in, in German you say uh, roter Faden, so mm, it's the, uh, red thread. the the red thread uh, that leads to the check in. The, then you have a check in box or even a check in methodology on the floor. Mm. Um, for example, I like to do the triangle of uh, common things. Maybe mm -hmm. you can translate it like that. So uh, just tape some triangles on the floor and and, and say people, okay, three people uh, for each triangle and find things you have in common with um, each of the people on, on the triangle and then as a triangle in as whole. That's the check-in. And then, for example, if you then do... Um, yeah, um, a brainstorming. Then I have a, a canvas at the wall where people can uh, put their ideas on post-its in the taped canvas. Um, in in one of my last workshops, I talked about creativity, so I taped um, the ice iceberg mm -hmm. model on the wall, and um, yeah, then then had to talk about creativity and had. A prepared paper that I can put on the iceberg to explain certain th things. Um, yeah, and in my ideal ideal facilitate setting, um, the 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 red, what did you Sweat? call it? Sweat? Red um, goes through the whole room, and in the end, there's a check check out, um, and it yeah it it gives the the room structure, and for me, it's a, a sort of playground. I prepare also for myself mm. <laughs> so if i like yeah. the room i have more energy to to run the workshop and uh, yeah what i what i hear and it's beautiful i'm getting excited by just hearing it it's on the one hand it's an immersive the agenda becomes an immersive experience mm -hmm. where you can walk through the, literally walk through the agenda and the different points and be guided yeah. So people who do need maybe a little bit more structure would like to know what comes next, where this going, they mm -hmm. have the overview. Yeah. And thereby yeah. you don't need to explain it. So that's how I now understand what you mean with the room facilitates, co-facilitates. Mm -hmm. And even um, one in one of the last workshops, uh, the, there was always the, the word em embodiment. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. it's, it's, you don't sit at tables and do methods. You you use the room to to walk around and to also it it does something with you when you have just the check in and you move to a certain point where there is the check in and there is your spot at the moment, yes. right? Or yeah. you have um, yeah, you have um, a methodology at the room where my where there's a person, I taped maybe the shape of a person at the room and people stand there and can, uh, yeah, use their body to to um, to get into certain states. Okay, so to, to take a posture and thereby posture, change, for example, change their state of mind. Mm -hmm. or, or become a persona um, in, in, a, in a design thinking workshop. I love that. Yeah. And so the, yes, the embodiment part, because you're walking through the experience. And I can even imagine that when you said the tape also welcomes the participants, they come into the space and it's as if this, the tape shakes their hand and makes them curious. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, look around you, look on the floor. There's something for you. Look maybe to the wall so yeah. suddenly you are kind of waking up their senses. Yeah, and uh, and you can if you have a maybe a title for your workshop. Um, let's say, room for uh, impossibilities. 
mm. then in your in your in the start of work, workshop you can cross out the uh, the im and it becomes the room of possibilities mm. um so that's a very nice way to yeah to to make people curious when they when they enter the room that's also a thing um which which i recognized Uh, people don't know that kind of uh, facilitation um, so much. Um, so they are very uh, surprised. Yeah. And um, I never had a negative uh, feedback from a participant that uh, I, I don't like the tape or something like that. <laughs> so it's it's always uh, yeah curiosity and surprise. Yes. And I think there's also something that um, sparks a sense of care because the tape hasn't been there. It's not that you project it on the wall. It's you, it's a craft or it's an act of, mm. of art. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit um, a pop-up art experience mm -hmm. just for this day. Um, Yeah, and that's also the the sweet spot because I'm I, I would not say that I'm a tape artist. Um, there are other people who can do amazing things with tape. They do whole facades of uh, buildings um, mm. or interior design or some, something like that. Um, but I have the sweet spot in quickly, uh, yeah, uh, setting a room up with tape. Yeah, and it's um it reminds me of graphic facilitators so mm -hmm. yes they're usually very good artists so they can draw yeah and still they are not they're not painters it's not their mm. main profession to draw or for the beauty or the um, yeah absolutely the, um, yes the aesthetics of it so i see the parallel there that it's a tool for mm -hmm. you as much as the graphic recording is a tool for them to capture the What is happening? Yeah. The nice thing with with tape is that it's even easier than drawing. You have just straight lines. That's what he says. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I experienced it in, in a lot of workshops this year. So um, of course, if you have a a designer, for example, I had one designer in in one of the workshops. Uh, greetings to Daniel from uh, Quentin und Glück. Mm. Um, and uh, of course, for him, it was like a, a new pen yes so he, he could uh, uh draw on the wall <laughs> with tape but i uh, also had a lot of people uh yeah who, who said i'm very curious i i'm not i can't draw or something but even they um yeah had the experience that with tape they can set up the room in a, in a very nice way without too much practice yes i can imagine so being a person who would also say about herself that she cannot draw, that's me. My stick figures look um, <laughs> look very bad even. I can imagine that the restriction through the tape that we cannot have mm -hmm. round shapes, so everything mm -hmm. is a line, as you just said, gives us permission to be imperfect and maybe to think of, okay, what is the approximation? Um, yeah, to re to reduce the thing. yeah you 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 can you can use it in a very simple way and the fact that you draw a, a line figure on the wall a big one <laughs> uh, makes it look cool even yes. if it's only a, a line figure for example and then i th can imagine that it's through the small things that you make it suddenly funny or interesting if you just add a few hair or yeah. blue eyes in the stick sure. figure then suddenly it becomes approachable mm -hmm. and that's also something i like a very uh, like very much when i have time left in preparation i look for little surprises in the room where i can mm -hmm. add a little tape to uh, just make a little joke yeah i can see for that. example there there was uh, in, in 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 the floor uh which we taped that there, there was a, a cable hanging out from the from the roof, uh, mm -hmm. not, not the roof, from the ceiling. ceiling. So it was what to do with this tape. Uh, it's senseless there, but uh, then you can just point an arrow and say here, free Wi-Fi, for example. <laughs> and then, and then a, an ugly tape 
a, a cable um, yeah can be a a, a yes. joke <laughs> yes and yeah and thereby keeps also the participants on their feet and yeah sparks this curiosity or this looking beyond mm -hmm. because everything they see kind of then feeds into the um the purpose yeah, can, of the workshop you can use it to highlight uh, certain things in the room that are helpful for the workshop but you can also uh, yeah uh, draw the attention not in uh, in uglier parts of the room because we all know it as facilitators often you don't know the room and often they are not that perfect for the workshop and then tape uh, just uh, two rolls of colorful tape help a lot to uh yeah to make the room your playground i hear you um i had a i had such a situation recently so being in a one big space mm -hmm. with not much color and not much not even enough wall space to put all the flip charts in um and then yeah just putting a little bit of tape to okay here here we are standing or um i made a little um uh, uh, now I'm losing my English. Um, a little fire, so mm -hmm. that we have something to stand around a fire. Yeah, uh, and it makes people smile. And I realize that especially when we work in large rooms that that don't invite creativity. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this morning, um, in in our LinkedIn alumni group, um, one of my participants um, posted a, a photo from a big traditional hotel room that looked with a uh, Kronleuchter, uh, fancy uh, lamps, and uh, yeah, it really looked like more like a an old school wedding place mm -hmm. than a yeah a room for a creative workshop and uh yeah then she asked oh what can i do with this room and then we brainstormed what we can do and uh yeah put down the the blankets from the tables and put tape on the uh, tables and maybe add little uh, colorful feet to the chairs and uh yeah making big uh, a big agenda at the wall yeah so yeah it, it oh, yeah it just needs a little bit of tape and yeah. you can do some magic in in, yeah. in some rooms it feels like magic <laughs> totally i can um i can see that and um also to give direction and permission to participants because for instance there might be a a space then on the ground okay if you need time off just mm -hmm. walk there and, and everyone suddenly knows it. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have and, to tell and... people where to go constantly, but the room facilitates it. The tape facilitates it. Yeah. Um, especially in formats where there are a lot of people involved, you don't have to explain everything to everybody. Um, for example, you can just make a sign at the wall. Okay, put your bags and uh, everything you don't need for the workshop here. And then you have a certain area on the floor where they can put their bags and yeah um it also um i i use the the term um room hygiene can, mm -hmm. can you say that Raum hygiene. yeah why <laughs> um, not so, so that the uh, that you don't have bags everywhere yeah so that's not cool for the for the eyes and for the atmosphere but people know where to put their bags it's just yeah. a very simple thing yes because if we if we have clutter around, it distracts our attention, our presence, and the more we can remove the clutter, the better. Yeah. yeah. So you can you can structure the room and guide participants through a workshop, and you can also change it during a workshop. Yeah. Um, you can add things very quickly when participants do a certain uh, session where you don't need to moderate, for example. Then you can use tape to at the next step for example or to you have to be very quick for that right 
yeah, you become quicker. <laughs> um, that's always a question from from the participants. How much time uh, do I need to prepare room? Uh, because uh, most of the times you have only one hour or maybe two, and yeah, you have then to 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 see what's what's most important for me. And like I said, you become quicker. So now for me, in an hour, I can can do. Um, yeah, big rooms. Um, but in the beginning, maybe you don't tape every word. Maybe you can also print out some uh, words and mm. put them on the wall. I I also had uh, developed a tape font. Mm -hmm. So um, I give that to my participants and they can then in a tape look, write words, uh, print them out and put them on the wall and it fits through mm -hmm. the whole... Without um, breaking the design. Look. Yes. Yeah. And so hearing all of that, there are a couple of more technical or logistic questions that come to my mind. One is what sort of, I imagine that there is a specific tape that doesn't damage the wall so that you can mm -hmm. actually wrap it off without having afterwards a huge renovation bill from your client. Yeah. So that's that's the only uh, mood breaker in in the whole facilitating game. Um, you you need to check with uh, facility management if you can do that in the room. Not every room is um, you can not do that in in every room, especially in in older rooms or uh, when you do a workshop in a in an old castle or something. Um, you need to check that. Mm -hmm. um, and in certain rooms, I don't use tape because I know then there will be damage at the wall. But on normal walls, or uh, I, mo mostly I like the walls you, with, with which you can uh, divide the rooms, mm -hmm. you know? I, um, in, in, in big workshop rooms, you can add walls in between. And mm -hmm. of course, on, on these walls, uh, you can tape perfectly. Um, I use a tape that sticks very good and that also also good uh, removable so at home i take sometimes uh things uh are for a year at the wall and i when i tear it down nothing um happened <laughs> mm -hmm. um for the floor i use a more a sticky one uh, but i have two main tapes i use and this year i uh i also uh, learned about a tape um, which has thinner lines so I can mm -hmm. do uh, more uh, outlines. Ah. And, uh, I don't have to cut my main tape as yeah. I did before. And so I, I also be, I became faster <laughs> because uh, I, have, I have more different tape. Uh, Variation. Uh, variations in yeah. thickness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Expanding the toolbox. And um, what about waste? So um, I imagine because you're doing it, one it is, as you say, it's pop-up art. Yeah. So you do it and then you take a picture and then you remove it. Yeah, um, that's a big topic also for me because it's, um, yeah, um, uh, I want to be sustain want to be sustainable and uh, not harm our planet. Um, but... Uh, unfortunately, there is not a green tape on the market uh, at the moment yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope there will be. I, there are green tapes, but they are not uh, for facilitating because they are brown and boring. And mm. uh, so they are not usable for that kind of purpose. But um, I will use my taping influencer power to <laughs> trigger the... Uh, yeah, the companies uh, who produce, uh, which produce tape uh, to come up with a green tape. And um, there are certain aspects. Um, for example, one of my participants uh, recently wrote that she uh, did not use that much flip chart paper. Mm -hmm. So instead mm -hmm. of using flip chart paper, she had tape on the wall and it was even less waste. Um, I also, the main tape I use is also a paper tape. 
So it's only okay. the the color of the tape and the glue that is not um, very sustainable. Um, I encourage my participants to use certain things uh, not only once. So for example, to make signs they can use in, in their regularly formats on, on thin and light wooden pieces. So uh, you can yeah, recycle them for the next workshop. Um, what? Yeah, I compensate a little bit. Um, I uh, yeah, spent a certain percentage of my income to to good projects. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, so, and mm -hmm. one one other argument um, uh, is that workshops are a very expensive thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you manage somehow to really make people aware in the room so that the time which you use for traveling um, and also the emissions for traveling to come to a workshop um, yeah when you when you raise awareness for for the workshop and for the results of the workshops through tape then it's also a kind of sustainable more sustainable event for me mm. than if you travel and uh, people are maybe not that uh, in, there in the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, 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 yeah, not that easy argument, but for me, it, it uh, it's also an argument. <laughs> yeah, I can, um, I can see the, the storyline that um, through the, coming back to the care, so you're preparing the workshop space in a way that it becomes this, one off opportunity because yeah. it is almost like a, an exhibition so it's a piece of art that was created for this workshop and suddenly and people are very aware of this one off opportunity they're joining mm -hmm. and um i thought about this question a lot so what can i do with tape waste after mm -hmm. the workshop and it, for my workshops, I collect the tape waste that, that mostly it's tape balls, little mm -hmm. tape balls, uh, colorful tape balls. And I, uh, I try to do some uh, little tape monsters with it, with my mm -hmm. son. So I, I add some eyes and some feet and then I have a little puppets made from tape rubbish. <laughs> and maybe in the, in the future, I will add or I will encourage people to send me their tape waste and I maybe uh, produce tape waste furniture. Ooh. So could be a nice thing. I don't know yet, but uh, this is interesting. you see, I'm, I'm thinking about it, right? Yes. You can, you can press tape to little cubes mm -hmm. and um, so it, it becomes an, uh, it, there's another use for it. Yes. And you can't, you can't do that with post-its. Or maybe you can. I don't know. <laughs> Another, I like the idea, although this might then uh, take you away from the facilitation if you're only producing furniture afterwards. When you mentioned the tape monster, I was thinking of a takeaway for the participants. So yeah. what could be a little kind of a reminder of the workshop? Okay, so what if at the end everyone has their own tape monster that they mm -hmm. can put on their desk so that yeah. it smiles at them and reminds them of the outcomes of the workshop. Yeah, that's a very nice idea. So I can um, give them a little set of uh, uh, Zahnstocher tooth toothpicks pick, pick, toothpicks mm -hmm. to to create little figures that, uh, yeah. that they can um, yeah take as a token from the workshop to remind them. Yeah, yeah. Like that. so there are a few ideas to um, to also tackle the sustainability yeah. question. Yeah, and um, to to finish this part about the uh, about the logistics, um, is there any if if someone wants to try it, 
and get a little bit of tape to play around with it. How, where do you find it and what to pay attention to? Because I remember, so for this workshop, um, I then got quickly some tape. I never worked with it, but I thought I just try it out because I saw this space um, and I was inspired by your, um, by your posts <laughs> and then realized I do need to take your workshop to learn it. Yeah. So and the only how, tape, what would you recommend someone? Yeah. Um, there, there are these two tape, um, tapes I use. The, the one is, uh, they are both from, uh, a, a company in the USA. They, they're called, uh, pro tapes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not an advertiser for them. Yet, said about it, yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't manage to get in contact with somebody in charge. <laughs> um, so the one tape is uh, console tape or artist tape mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Pro Tapes, and the other is Pro Guff. So this is the more sticky one. I only use for for the floor. The floor. And... Okay. And we can put the the links in the show notes. So is yeah, it because... there's, there's, uh, in Germany, there's only one online shop that really uh, sells them. And I can't recommend other tapes. I would like to because the tapes are pretty expensive. So one roll is about 15, 16 Euro, euros. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, an investment. Uh, it's an investment. It's a good investment, but it's an investment. Um, yeah. And there's only one, one shop that yeah. sells them. Which then brings another question in mind. So what is the extra investment if you want to tape um, a workshop space? So let's say someone says, okay, I want to, to try it. Um, mm -hmm. But then I guess you will, you add another hour for decoration plus you add um, the material. Yeah. What would Do be you the mean as a, as a facilitator or for the customer? Um, for the facilitator first. <laughs> yeah, for the facilitator, I think um, with three or four rolls, so let's say 60 euros, you can do a lot of workshops. Okay. You can, so if you don't um, use it uh, too much, <laughs> of course, uh, I a, a few weeks ago I had a workshop where I brought the tape and and said, okay, now the first exercise, please just decorate the room as you like. It's a very intuitive um, exercise. And they started somewhere and ran through the whole room. So of course, then a roll is pretty, uh, pretty fast uh, empty. Yeah. But um, for normal usage, um, it's not that big an investment. The yeah. time and the practice is, is more... Yeah. So three rows, this would then be, yeah, something around 50 euros, 50 US dollars. Yeah. And you can do at least three or four workshop, okay. workshops with it. Which colors would you recommend then to start with? What are the three? Um, yeah. There are, not, <laughs> there are not too many colors. Um, there are only 10, 10 or 12 or something like that colors uh, from this special tape. They they have the uh, pretty much the original posted colors mm -hmm. so a pink an orange green yellow blue um if i had to choose i would always use uh, the pink tape a black tape and the blue tape mm. <laughs> okay um but you can, we can also use it to uh, color code certain um exercises ah. for example in the design thinking workshops you you have the five or six uh, phases and uh, for the first phase you you use the the pink one and for the second the, the green one and then you can also use the green or pink post-it notes um people who like uh clearance clarity uh, clarity <laughs> clarity uh yeah they um for them, it's perfect. Yeah, and structure, yeah, color codes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And now we've, um, I totally get the role of tape beyond the decoration. It's awesome. And I wonder <laughs> whether you also use tape with participants. So obviously you use them when you teach facilitating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But would you also have 
a workshop where the participants of the workshop use the tape? Yeah, there are, um, there's one thing you can always do is just uh, put two rolls of tape in the corners uh, for for each team, for example, and then just say, okay, our first exercise is make your team space nicer. Mm -hmm. um, use the tape to come up with a team logo or a team sign and uh, yeah, use it to, to make your corner look special. So it's a very good team building exercise in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but you can also use it uh, for certain methods like persona taping. So in the past, I prepared a very rough figure on the wall and then g gave the participants the tape and said, okay, now you can uh, make uh, the persona your persona. And then people can, like you said before, uh, add a little hair and add eyes and add uh accessories mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. that's also pretty easy because there there's not a very it's not a big obstacle for people to use it yeah. yeah it's it's even easier than to say okay please draw it everyone is familiar with tape from uh preparing the painting of a room of or example for example <laughs> so i yeah, wish i there. was <laughs> There's also a good uh, parallel. Um, the better you prepare room when you uh, want to paint it, um, the better the result looks. And that's also for facilitating. The better you prepare a workshop room, the better the workshop. Yes, um, for sure. I was thinking. I was thinking in the direction of, for instance, Lego Serious Play, where you ask participants to build something with their hand, to think with their mm -hmm. hands, to mm -hmm. represent an idea, and where you have all these artifacts. Um, so can you ask them, or maybe you have done that, um, tape your vision, or mm -hmm. uh, what does, what do your company values look like yeah. when you tape them? Um, I did that not a lot of uh, times in the past, but I did it. Um, we used tape as a storytelling tool, for example, in vision workshops. So we prepared a little map on the on the floor, and the one half of the room was the now land, mm -hmm. and people could tape. Okay, what what's what's happening in the now land? What are our aspects today? And then there was a river on the floor, and uh, during the day they build a bridge over the river with tape uh, to enter the next land and then to tape, okay, what's uh, important for us in the future. Um, and of course, now in workshops, um, in the facilitate workshops, um, I have an exercise where people uh, draw three cards to um, which are part of an idea. So there's also a, always a, a, a who, for whom I um, I'm building something, what, and the purpose, mm -hmm. and then they the the exercise is to yeah visualize that idea in the wall. So it, it's uh, it's possible and it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, one thing that could be very interesting for facilitators is um, you can prototype a workshop in the room. So if you have a an, a very important workshop. And you have the uh, the time to prepare it, and you can uh, visit the room before, for example. Yeah, right. You can use the tape to prototype the workshop and to see in the room what works. And mm. during this preparation and prototyping, new ideas come in mind um, for the workshop. So it's also a, can trigger creativity um, for workshop concepts. Yeah. And in my case, when uh, I have, of course, I have an idea what I will do on uh, at the day, but um, there are always new ideas when I enter the room just because I can do them with a tape. So to give you an example, one idea that came up was in this creativity workshop where I taped the iceberg model on the wall. I also taped a little igloo on the iceberg and then i added a white tape around some chairs and the the white tape represented the igloo mm -hmm. and so participants were sitting in the igloo and i also had a, a little fire taped in the middle 
So that was also a little storytelling aspect and, and that, that idea that came in mind when I was preparing preparing the workshop yeah, in the room in the morning. <laughs> it's beautiful. It sounds like a really yeah, embodied experience, um, an immersive experience where you think with your tape. Yeah, yeah. I, I use it as a very spontaneous uh, creativity trigger when I prepare workshops. How long does it take to to learn that? Um, the, to the most Im yeah, the not most to be embarrassed anymore. Uh, no, no, the, the, the most important uh, aspects you can learn in one day. Mm -hmm. So, and I see people using it now. Um, they visited or they participated in one of my workshops, and now I see them using it. And of course, the more you use it, the better you get. The, the better you you uh, you uh, your feeling for rooms yeah um gets yeah um so it doesn't take much to start it's just this just start it and um and then for example when you tape uh words uh letters uh you you develop your own style mm -hmm. and you do develop yeah the shapes you like the most and you use a lot in your workshops um but my workshops are a little more than yeah a, a push in in the direction to start with it i can imagine and i guess uh you approach the selection of the workshop space in a very different way because you might rather need space than a lot of wall space and space because if you are taping words yeah, for Suddenly my everything workshops, becomes supersized. Huh? <laughs> um, no, uh, it's not. I, I in the in the past I did not had very much influence on the workshop room, mm -hmm. so I use then the room that I have. Yeah, and some rooms can uh, you can add more tape, and in some rooms you can just use it very reduced. For yeah. example, when you have a very modern creative room. You don't have to use that much tape, right? But in a very boring and, yeah, uh, maybe even ugly room, uh, you can use tape. I have one participate uh, uh, participant. Um, greetings uh, to Michel uh, from Switzerland, and he's doing a lot of uh, formats with uh, um, communities, so uh, Behörden. Uh, Oh, public, public, pu sector. public, public, public sector. sector uh, yes, with yes. city uh, employees, and they have often very, yeah, very ugly rooms. <laughs> mm -hmm. And but I'm I'm always pleased when I see uh, his pictures uh, now using the tape to uh, yeah to add color and to add structure and to make these even very boring rooms into uh, yeah, creative spaces. Which reminds me that very often, and I had the conversation with many facilitators on the podcast, how can we create just some change in everyday, in our everyday routine? So they would have the workshop in the same meeting rooms as they have their weekly meetings. And then it's very difficult to get the group into a different mindset if they are surrounded mm -hmm. by everything that is just the same. So mm -hmm. with tape, you can yeah. create a new experience in a very known environment. Yeah, exactly. And that's it's also um, a thing which I want to explore a little bit more in the in the future uh, to work with uh, internal communication, for example, mm -hmm. to do internal campaigns in in companies because you can yeah you can. Uh, you can have pop-up messages about new values or new new vision in the whole building. Um, so there are endless possibilities in that direction. And async workshops, right? So even if people are not there at the same time, but if you have yeah, the directions that, and can, the arrows. You can ask uh, certain questions and just leave people uh yeah adding notes there when they want to add notes yeah, yeah. so Beautiful. it's a, like a, like you can you can do um whiteboards pop up whiteboards in in the whole building um <laughs> like a mur mural board but uh at the wall 
Yes. <laughs> a yeah. real mural. Yeah. According to you, what makes a workshop fail? Uh, when the facilitator is not in the right energy. So, for example, if I cannot make the room my playground, I guess I'm not a very good facilitator. So that's one, maybe one of the re, uh, first things. And um, yeah, participants who have too much uh, workload mm. in, the, in the back of their heads, uh, that's also um, a mood breaker. Yeah, if you and bad material. I hate bad material. So uh, I always bring my materials because I, I never uh, <laughs> um, want to work with old uh, pens and um, glues that uh, doesn't and sticky work anymore. notes that fall off the sticky wall notes, because they yeah. purchased the cheap ones. Yeah. Yes. So I hear that. And when you say that a facilitator who cannot make the room their playground, what, what I hear is also this um, creating a safe space for us. Mm -hmm. So how can we make the space, create a space for us to where we can move freely and where we feel settled ourselves, authentic and safe? Yeah. For me, help tape helps a lot. I think there are a lot of facilitators who don't need tape to uh, to 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 make a safe space or to make a creative room or to create atmosphere or awareness. But for me, tape helps to do that. Yeah. yeah. Do you use music? I also use music. Um, <laughs> of course, um, I, I love the, for example, the uh, electro swing. <laughs> Mm. Uh, list on on uh, uh, how is it called Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, brings good energy into the space. Yeah. I was just thinking of music because it's another way to really create an atmosphere. Yeah. So tape. Well. When you say that tape is also a little bit like music. Hmm. For example, um, you use different. Uh, types of music in a workshop right mm -hmm. if you want to have energy and uh, creativeness uh, you use very uh yeah energetic music but you can also use very calm music in in certain phases and so it's with tape you can even use it in a very for example in a uh, in a Is it also called um, mediation in English? Me mediation? Yeah, mediation. Mediation, yeah. So just, for example, just add a little line on the floor between the two people uh, who need to talk. And maybe in the end, you can remove parts of the line <laughs> mm. to symbolize, okay, we, we, uh, we came to an agreement, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's a very reduced and... Uh, Yeah, easy way to use tape, but you can also, of course, um, do the tape symphony um, and uh, f uh, yeah, tape the whole room as a colorful uh, pop-up art experience you can walk in, for example. Yeah. So you have, yeah, yeah, it's a good, good, uh, good uh, parallel to music. Yeah, can and to it really very... amplify different atmospheres. Yeah, you can use it to to uh, in a very reduced and uh, clear way, and you can use it in a very creative, beautiful, inspiring way. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my brain yeah. is just firing so many ideas, and I um will put the a link in the show notes to visit your website to see a few examples. But yeah, of course. I think this would be nice. What remains your number one facilitation challenge? You mean besides from the reason why it could fail? Mm. Yeah, personally, um, what is... What I need to learn or... Or what you, what you find difficult? Difficult. 
Mm. Yeah. I'm not um, a classical facilitator or trainer. Um, I never learned it professionally. I never, for example, never had a design thinking um, training at <laughs> in, in Potsdam. Um, so uh, my challenge is that when people are not interested in the workshop or if they are um, difficult, then I do not have the motivation or the skills to bring them back in the workshop. So I mm. then tend to ignore them mm. or, to, or, the, or to ask them to leave. <laughs> so difficult people are not a challenge for me. I want to uh, solve. Yeah. So maybe that's my number one facilitation challenge that I need to uh, learn how to reintegrate difficult people or to look behind their lack of motivation to, uh, yeah. Yeah, I I hear you, and I and maybe it's a total different way of a different focus of a facilitated workshop mm. because I think so hmm? next week I have a workshop and uh, and I know that there will be a participant who talks a lot and likes to talk and uh, that will be a challenge for me to <laughs> to give him enough space but not let him conquer the whole workshop. Yeah, and um, how to redirect. Mm -hmm. So I um, I had Elsa Kramer on the uh, on the podcast recently, and she had a beautiful strategy where we she would um, give very specific tasks to these people who like to talk a lot and educate everyone else. So she would then match them with those who are maybe at a different stage, maybe rather beginner level, and then assign them to mentor someone else um, mm -hmm. so that you can acknowledge and appreciate the, their willingness to contribute and rechannel it um, in a way that it contributes actually the entire group or maybe one person without distracting everyone. Yeah. Uh, I that's think a that's nice a real way. skill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I'm very thankful because I, I never uh, get to know that much facilitators as this year. So I learn a lot from very experienced facilitators um, in every facilitate workshop. Yeah. And I think there, yeah, there are different workshops, there are different opportunities of why people come together. And if you design... Yeah. Um, or if we attract those where people actually sign up, they are do they are not uh, they are not volunteered by someone mm. else. Everyone who is in the room wants to be there. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I think that helps a lot. It's absolutely okay to then seek these sessions if you know that you, it's not your cup of tea to convince people who don't want to be there. Yeah. Um. I want to go into a different direction. I forgot. I lost my track. Has it ever happened? Um, or is it, is the tape? No, let me go differently. I'm at the moment, and, and maybe this um, actually attaches beautifully to this topic, um, because at the moment I'm I'm very curious about all these different facilitation signatures. So, because as facilitators, we, we do the same stuff, but we do it differently. And that's mm -hmm. why we attract certain, certain clients or certain groups. Mm -hmm. And for you, it's very clear that or it's, a, it's an assumption that clients would approach you because they want a facilitated workshop. 
Um, now, uh, nowadays, they don't know that yet, so they are surprised by it. But in the future, I guess they, they, there could be the question also from the customer side, do you also use tape? Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, there are not a lot of people who knows about it, that you can facilitate a workshop. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are more and more, um, of course. And um, Is it something that you would discuss with a client beforehand? So your approach and what it means for the entire flow? Um, not that much. Um, I, I mention it, of course, because I need to see if it's possible. And um, I, yeah, sometimes I show... Uh, a few pictures to but people need to experience it they can't see the value in it when they never saw it um that's a hard part uh selling it uh but as i mentioned i even if the client would say no i don't need it i will not pay for it i would use it mm. <laughs> because i need it That's a very um, good point. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, it could become a thing. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just started it this year with uh, yeah, professionalizing the whole facilitating uh, philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it become a thing. As I said, similar to the graphic recording, um, which is a thing. Mm. And some clients are willing to pay for it and others aren't. And I know that yeah. some facilitators always work with a visual recorder. And then mm -hmm. it's just part of the pricing. Yeah. Um, What What's also nice is um, when it looks good in a workshop um, and you do it at a corporate company, then you can also leave it for a few, a few mm. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a nice reminder, similar to the tape monster. Mm -hmm. And I think there are some things that I wouldn't let the client decide whether they want it or not. So for instance, I know that some facilitators charge separately for, for preparation. And mm. then some clients argue that, oh, I don't need to, I don't need you to prepare. I won't pay for that. Mm. And then it's a very difficult point to start a, a negotiation so personally i wouldn't put the preparation into the into the offer because it's nothing no. that's negotiable and yeah, i can imagine right. with the typing it's then similar it's just part of it mm -hmm. in my experience people are always cur curious yeah they don't know it but they uh, can imagine that it could be cool cool so yeah. <laughs> there are not too many critical questions about it uh Only the walls, of course, and um, you need to clarify if it's possible. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. For giving us a glimpse. About it. <laughs> yes. A glimpse into the world of facilitating. Um, yeah. Very well. Ahead of the curve. And um, so, where do you. Where do your workshops take place? It's always in Germany or do you also travel around? Um, I was in Austria this year once um, uh, and will be in Vienna in a few weeks. Um, for next year, um, I will plan it a little bit differently. There won't be that much workshops. So um, at the moment, it's it's not fixed yet, but I will do one workshop in Munich, one in Cologne, one in Berlin, and one in the middle, maybe in Fulda, where Neuland uh, has their uh, buildings. Um, and I will, the idea is to offer a two or three day workshop. One, the one first day would be for beginners. Mm -hmm. Second day for uh But people who want to spice it up a little bit to learn about specifics, uh, specific tape styles, uh, yeah, new new ways to to work with it. And if I add a little uh, a third day, then it could be uh, 
could go in an arty direction. Mm. So to to yeah, also do a little bit of tape art. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, besides the corporate workshops, yeah, yeah. I, there are a lot of um, corporates who want to do that at the moment, and then it's an internal workshop. Yeah. Okay, so teams wanting to learn to tape. Yeah, the, um, I, I, the, <laughs> I'm doing one workshop this year with uh, uh, the Bundeswehr. Yeah, the army, the trans- German army. Down, the German army, yeah. I ne- never thought that they would tape, but they also have agile coaches, for example, or internal facilitators. And uh, so they, I'm, I I'm would doing love a workshop. An introduction. <laughs> Yeah, can can um, can give you one. Thank you. And okay, so then you're basically you're working with internal facilitators, not with teams, but with internal facilitators who would then use the technique for their internal mm-hmm. workshops and their internal. Yeah, but but also teams um, who want to build their vision, for example, or to um, to have a team building event. Okay. Yes. So there is also one workshop in uh, in Austria at the end of the year where a team will um, yeah co tape their vision on a, on a big wall. So yeah. there are a lot of possibilities. I e- I even don't know them all at the moment. But the, uh, the, after our uh, podcast, um, I will talk to a guy from a consulting agency and he he said uh, i'm not a facilitator but maybe i can use tape in my consulting work so interesting um, new possibilities pops up every week <laughs> beautiful uh, yeah there um I, I i need to to see where where the the journey is is heading next year yeah but there will be pioneering... there will be open yeah there will be open workshop there will be conferences and um yeah, I will uh, build on the community that uh, we became this year. So there, yeah. at the end of the year, there will be about 100 people who came to my workshops. And we are sharing pictures and uh, inspiring ourselves um, how to use tape. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's a very living thing. I can see that. And maybe you're going to come to Amsterdam. We have so many facilitators. Yeah, yeah, here. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the, your question. Um, I, I would love to do an inter, uh, international and in English. I, I, I di- didn't, I didn't uh, facilitate a facilitate workshop in English yet. <laughs> so if uh, if we can do one together in, in Amsterdam, I would love it. Wonderful. You just need a room, and I guess there will be um, a lot of people who are interested after your podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's discuss that. Yeah. Like the idea. Sure. Awesome. Dum, da, da, dum. Thank you very much. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.